Good morning. Glad to have you here in our home just two days after Christmas on December the 27th, uh, 2020. We're approaching the year end, but we're also looking at a new beginning. And it's a time where people begin to think about uh, resetting their mindset. They look for a, a fresh start. Most of those things are happening with people in the world, you know, and they think like that. But there's always a great time to begin again with God. We live in a day where the Lord has made our days, and we can rejoice uh, any day and every day. We can thank God for the season that we're in, but we rejoice that he's the reason in every season. And we're thankful to be involved with you this morning. We're thankful that you're turning in uh, here at 9 a.m., and uh, God is a good God. And we're going to begin a, a series here for the next uh, couple or maybe three weeks on the God of the fourth watch. And perhaps you found yourself in these things. We just fa finished up uh, how to proceed uh, and a plan to proceed when a storm is prolonged. We're going to still talk about some storms today, but it, it has a different, a different uh, connotation. And, and through the word of God, um, he has extremely, extreme, extremely appeared in incredible ways in the darkest hours of, of our life, in the darkest uh, uh, moments uh, in, in, uh, in uh, believers' uh, existence. And, uh, and a lot of it alludes to a, the fourth watch or that, that moment of time or segment of time from 3 a.m., to 6 a.m., which is actually one of the darkest times in any in any night. And so we're going to talk about that today. And uh, if you would like to turn with me to Matthew 14, we're going to pick up in the 22nd verse. And it says, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into a boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up uh, on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when the evening was come, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, or between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it's a ghost. And that was just a superstition among some of the sailors um, in that culture of that day. And they believed that they would see something like that right before they died. And so this was something that brought them a fear. And um, even though they were believers, they still carried in a lot of uh, things from the culture at that, at that time. And they were troubled. And they cried out for fear, but immediately Jesus spoke, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And then Peter answered him, and he said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come out to you on the water. And Jesus said, Come. And so Peter, when he had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, that was boisterous. And he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And they got into the boat, and the wind ceased. I want to tell you something about, about God. There have been a lot of messages preached over this passages of Scripture. And uh, for 45 years of speaking the Word of God, I've probably had a lot of titles to this passage of Scripture myself. And there are some of those we have heard, and you have some of them are step out in faith when others can't. And there's one. Uh, keep your eyes on Jesus in the middle of the storm. There's another. Um, little faith will keep you in the boat but great faith will let you step out of the thing. Uh, are you fearful or faithful? We've heard that preached before. Make sure God is telling you, don't be, walk in presumption. There have been people that have actually thought that just because God told Peter to get out of the boat that they could, and there have been instances of people drowning, doing those kinds of things. And uh, so all of those have been, been messages, and, and, and they're all good uh, pertaining to that. But we're going to focus not today on walking on water or how to step out. 
we're not going to talk about how to keep our eyes on Jesus. What we are going to do is we're going to discover the why that it happened when it did. And there's a message for that. You know, the disciples a few hours later, or I'm sorry, earlier, uh, saw incredible healing, miracles, a miracle supply, rejoicing. People were fed. 5,000 were fed. Laughter. And now it's getting dark. And Jesus sent them across the lake to the other side. Uh, he knew where he was going. And they obeyed. But now something new has come up. And uh, uh, storms arose. So they're used to these kinds of things. But uh, waves are beating against the boat. And the wind is contrary. And I love that word contrary. The word contrary there means to be opposite in nature. Have you ever found yourself opposite in the nature of what you were doing before? Uh, in nature or position, it is counter-opposed. It is unfavorable, unwilling to accept, uh, accept advice or control. Those are contrary things. You can be contrary when before you met Christ and you were unwilling to accept advice or control. Uh, a lot of times our situations we find ourselves in, we find that we that it is unwilling to accept control. It doesn't seem like there's a way to get through things. Uh, a, a contrary uh, situations cause conflict. Now, Conflict is winnable in our lives when you discern the strength of the adversity. You are aware of the availability of your resources, that you also can discern the environment in which the conflict occurs. That's why we're talking about a God tonight, or this morning, I'm sorry, of, of uh, the fourth watch. It wasn't enough that the storm came up, but it was by night. And uh, you just can't see that next big boat crashing wave. And uh, uh, you can't see for guidance because there's no stars. But it's in the fourth watch, the darkest part of the night, that you find the miraculous move of God to the people who will respond to him. Have you experienced and I look at this and I thought to myself, have you experienced a battle in the fourth watch, the dark part in your life? Perhaps there is just in the night. Many people get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and pray. It seems like to be a dark time. The science has said that you dream the most between 3 and 6 o'clock. Uh, it's in the darkest portion of the night. And it should be the time where the, you find the most complete and restful sleep. It's no wonder that the enemy would speak to a lot of people in the fourth watch. Uh, it, there's, is, there a, is there a time in your life where it doesn't seem like there's any answers? Uh, faith is giving way to doubt. Uh, there's no solutions. Uh, you were expecting better test results, but it came back stage four. I've, I've experienced that with people. They thought the cancer was gone, and now it's back with a vengeance. You've been working at a job perhaps for 30 years, and all of a sudden you find yourself on the outs, and you've been to 15 different interviews, but there's no results yet. Perhaps there are bank accounts getting kind of low, and the engine in your car just broke up. You know, and and uh, during the fourth watch uh, season, you can't see what's coming next. But I'm going to tell you something. On a distant horizon, with everything contrary and conflicting those guys in the boat, in the distant horizon, there comes one walking. And I wrote this down because in the, the horizon of revelation knowledge, you see Jesus coming. He's coming for you. He's walking in the anointing of heaven. His faith is solidifying what's under him. So he can walk on water and it's not making him sink. The voice of majesty is speaking words of kindness and assurance and grace and comfort. 
And it's saying, be of good cheer. It's me. Don't be afraid. God is accustomed to the fourth watch. And there's been many, many instances of God dealing with people in that hour or in that dark time typified by a fourth watch. Over in Genesis, in Genesis 32, David had a, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, Jacob had a, a moment of uh, a, a fourth watch experience. A little bit earlier, he had gone to uh, 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 his, uh, his people uh, that were that was his wife or his mom's uh, uh, folks to find a wife, and he was running from his brother Esau. He had deceived his own father and stole a blessing. He was uh, was in com- uh, complicity with his mother to make that work. But there were people that hated him, and his brother wanted to kill him. And he found himself alone and on the way over into another land possibly in Syria, and, uh, and uh, he was outside of his comfort zone, and he'd found himself uh, asleep with a, a stone for a pillow out in the countryside, and then God spoke to him in that night, and uh, he said, I'm going to be with you, Jacob, and I'm going to keep you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land, and, and I will not leave you until I have done what I've spoken to you. And God made him a promise. And Jacob looked out in that and he saw the, the, the revelation of God ascending and descending through angelic presence on a ladder. And he said in verse 20 of, of Genesis 28, then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me, and will keep me in the way that I'm going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord will be my God. And then he, then he, uh, then a stone was placed there and he traveled on at the dawning of that day. Now we find just a few chapters later over in, uh, in, uh, Genesis 32, after so many years away, and he'd had his wives and concubines, and he'd had 12 sons now, and he was going back into the country of, of promise, into the land that was given to him. And, and he finds out that Esau is on the way to meet him with 400 men, and things look bad. And it says that at night, after he'd separated himself from his family and his camp, he was out there in the, in the, in the, at the time, and he began to wrestle, it said, with a man. In Genesis 32, in verse 22, he rose by night, took his wives and female servants, 11 sons, and crossed over the uh, ford of Jabbok, and he took them and sent them over the brook, oh, and sent them Oh, oh, it said over what he had, and it said that Jacob was left alone, and a man, capital M, wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. He was wrestling with God, a pre-incarnate form of Christ. And, and it says here, now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint and he wrestled with him. And then this man said to Jacob, let me go for the day breaks. And he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And he said, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And, uh, and he says, your name will no longer be called Jacob. But he said, but uh, you'll be called Israel, for as a prince, you have struggled with God and prevailed. I want to tell you something. There is a character change in the fourth watch. Almost at the break of day, which was during that last portion of a dark point in Jacob's existence, God was bringing him back but there was a crisis. There was uh, uncertainty and doubt, and his brother was coming. But, but at that moment, 
Jacob was prevailing with God. God said, I see this. I told you I would bring you back. I told you I'd bless you while you were there. I told you that I would sustain you and I would give you bread and I would sustain you so that it would be well with you and I would bring you back into the land of your fathers. And now you're here and you've prevailed with me. I'm gonna change your name. Now you're a mighty prince with God. And Jacob's name changed and we saw the birth of Israel. There's a, there's a character transformation in the fourth watch. God will do things in our life during those times. You know, the Bible says that tribulation and trials produce patience, and patience produces character, and character produces hope from Romans 5, and hope makes not ashamed. It doesn't disappoint. It doesn't make you directionless or aimless. That's what ashamed means. And uh, when we uh, when we're aimless, we can't we can't have faith. But but faith is the substance of things hoped for. Perseverance brings character, and character brings hope, and hope uh, brings victory because the love of God that is shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who is given to us. Character transformation says in the fourth watch, I'm with you. I'm going to make you perfect and complete and wanting nothing. You see, God loves us uh, where we're at. As we begin this study in the fourth watch, there are actually seven aspects of what God will do. We just covered one today, that he is a character transforming God. Are you allowing him to be your trial in the middle of things? Sometimes we're delivered from certain aspects of conflict. Other times we're, and we're enabled to go through. Sometimes we wrestle with God to get his vision, get his promise, get his will, take care of things that may have stood in the way, confess sins, and whatever we need to do. But in the end of the day, God's going to come with you. He's going to make a way for you. And today, I want you to know that he's with you in your fourth watch. We're going to be talking about how he's going back to your boat. He's going to stop those winds. He's going to deliver and redeem. And he's going to bring restoration into your life because he said, be of good cheer. It's me. I'm going where others can't. I'll walk on the water to get out to you. My faith solidifies my steps, and you'll find that your faith can do the same thing. If you need, if you need a prayer for anything, please get in touch with me on Robert Fry uh, on my Facebook page. Friend me and talk to me. Private message me. I'll accept. You can get uh, some of our other teaching series on uh, robertfryministries.org. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff on there, uh, all kinds of different series now. And then some of our, uh, our last uh, messages on Sunday morning are now appearing on that as well. But anyway, we're looking forward to seeing you propel into a new year. We know that God's going to do great things for us as we put him first and we walk in our faith. God is the God of a fourth watch. He's coming for you. He's blessing you in Jesus' name. Until next time, look at the bottom of the screen. Find my contact information. Don't be afraid to, to ask me to pray with you. I'm on it. I'm blessed to do it in Jesus' name. Until next time, God bless.